Welcome back and uh, today we'll be talking about generics collection which is a continuation of the last tutorial uh, about generics in C-sharp. So luckily for us uh, we have inbuilt um, generic classes and interfaces in .NET such as list, linked list, array list, uh, we have queue, stack, uh, dictionary, a whole lot of them but um, we'll be working on um, the basics ones today I will even make an example on how to use um, uh, object as class in a list. So let's start with our list of string. Uh, the list will be of string type. Let's give that name. Instantiate the list class, the inbuilt list class. And we use the names object to call the add method, meaning we are adding into uh, the list object that we just created. Let's give that Mary. Uh, you know we can add uh, several names uh, let's add up to uh, three or four names i'll just copy and paste that real quick uh, and then just change that uh, let's give that john let's give, let's give that alicia let's give that jimmy so now um the way to access this list is to iterate through them so we have the for each loop so var i'll create a variable var name in names okay so it's saying that for each this variable that I just created inside of this names object here then it should just print it out one after the other print out the name variable itself then we'll go ahead and read it. So if I run this now, it will print out all the names, all the list I have in the names list object. So you can see that Mary, John, Alicia, Jimmy. So that's like a list. So, but this is pretty basic. So what if we have something like, um, let's actually create a class. Okay, there's a class here. Let's create a class. So what do you have something like, uh, let me see. Uh, let's create a class student. Okay. Right, so this is a class student itself. Uh, what properties does the student have? We have a, a student, we have a name, right? We are going to create a property which is getter setter method. Our student will have an uh, an ID. Uh, student will have a program, a course, right? And let's just add something like age. So student has an ID by default. That will be an integer type. Student has a name. Student has um, what else? Age. And then student also has a program that they are running, right? I mean, a course that they are studying in college. So these are student properties by default, okay? So this is a model class. Now I want to create a list of students. So what I will do is, um, in real life, all these, in, all these uh, properties here will be fetching from the database and that's why we are using the properties to get and set it. So because we have a student object, I will explicitly create um, a data, a list of data in the student uh, list. So let's just give this student okay. So we can then come here and create the student data. So insert data there explicitly. Uh, let's say the first ID is 11, the name. Is um, Johnson age is probably 26 in the program is a uh, let's assume marketing is the program that Johnson is studying. Okay, so I have an error here because the type here is supposed to be an integer type, not a string type. So that should clear the error. Fine. So let's try and add uh, other data in there. 
note that I'm explicitly adding this data, but in real life, this data will be fetched from database. So let's give the student 102. Um, Kingston, and Kingston should be like 22, and Kingston is studying um, finance management. Okay, uh, let's give Mary a name, and Mary is probably 24, and Mary is studying nursing, right? And the ID for Mary should be 103. Then the last student, we can name the last student uh, Wayne, probably 25, studying music production. Right? Okay, so now we have this list of data in here. So, how do we assess these data here? What we we'll do is we need to uh, iterate through it as usual. So for each, create a variable of student in students. So what we'll do is we'll print it out. And the way we'll print it out is we use this student variable to call all the properties of the student. So we'll do student dot ID. Student dot name student dot age student dot program. So that should be it, and let's see how that works for us. Let's run that and see what we get. Mary, John, Alicia, Jimmy. Okay, this is printing the name. Uh, let's quickly debug that real quick. Okay. Uh, okay, so what I'll do is I'll just create a, a string uh, interception in between the. We have to design that real well quick quick okay let's just add a comma in there put a dash in there okay okay but let's see let's try it again one more time see what we get uh, the list of all students should be provided so here you go we have the student ID, name, age, and course. So we have the list of all the student data out here now. So that is how generic list works. We also have linked linked list. We have dictionaries. We have a whole lot of uh, uh, generic classes in C sharp. And like you see, I even created a student generic list itself. So that means in real life objects, we can also create a list of data from database. In real life, we'll be fetching this from data. From database but I explicitly add coded the data here just to show example how we can retrieve data so this is how generic list works and um, um, in the next video we'll be talking about recursion recursion method in recursive method in C sharp where you see a method where, where a method calls itself so that's it for this class uh, you can leave a comment like it and um, if you have any question uh, you can leave a comment as well and um, also share the video and don't forget to subscribe.